Today, we listen in on a conversation between New York Times best-selling author and internationally renowned speaker Lisa Vivier and Pastor Leah, co-founder and senior pastor of the 5,000-strong Heart of God Church in Singapore, whose average age after 20 years is 22. They talk about Lisa's book, Godmothers, and Pastor Leah's life message and her new book, Generations, and why these two things are critical for the church today. Key, key thing, leaders out there, you need to hear that. What Pastor Leah said, she had a revelation that the next generation is our reinforcement, not your replacement. Revolutionary. How about you, Lisa? Talk to me about the many, many women that you have influenced in your life. Well, the more gorgeous one goes first. <laughs> How about the oldest one goes first? <laughs> I am Lisa Bevere, and I am so thrilled to be here with my friend, Leah. And I love Heart of God Church. And it's just, it's surreal for me that I'm here in Singapore. But I am an author, speaker, minister, and have been ministering for over 30 years. Wow. That's greatness sitting right beside me. <laughs> So, well, I'm Cecilia Chan, and uh, I'm also known as Pastor Leah, and I'm the co-founder and senior pastor of Heart of God Church Singapore. My husband, Pastor Hao, and I, we have um, pioneered a church for the last 20 years where, you know, it's been home to thousands of young people. As to what I do in the church, um, some people ask me that. What do I do in the church? <laughs> I, I actually do everything. <laughs> everything. <laughs> so... There is a long-awaited book that we are all so excited about. I know the title, but tell everybody out there what it's about. My husband and I, Pastor Hao and I, we have been working on a book, and it is called Generations. Um, it talks about how we can build a church that is, we can grow a church that becomes younger and stronger. And Which also, I personally yeah. have gotten to see you yes. do that. And, um, you know, Leah... <laughs> There's a lot of people that write books, but you guys have done it, and I have seen it worked out so beautifully. John and I got to see these generations worked out who are young and strong, not just young, but young and strong. Yes. We saw in Chiang Mai when you brought up the generation after generation after generation, and John and I are astounded by the work that you guys have done. And most people would never say, we want to build a church that's young and strong. They'd say, we want to build a church that's big. Yeah. But you've understood the key. And what, like, if you're going to share three key things, what are the three key things that you would share about building a church, generational church, but generations young and strong, what, what would you say they are? Well, one of the things that is really important about building generations, we have a certain principle that we built by in our church, and that is that generations are not replacements, but they are reinforcements. Can Think, you, yes, yes, but can you pause a second? Because yes. that has been one of my favorite things you've ever said. Because when we understand that the next generation is a reinforcement, yes. then the generation yes. ahead of them feels valued. Yes. They don't feel like they're devalued and their time is up, but That's that right. their time is being amplified. That's right. So key, key thing, leaders out there, you need to hear that. What Pastor Leah said, she had a revelation that the next generation is our reinforcement, not your replacement. That's right. Yeah, so I just so, want to highlight that. Yeah, that's a very important thing to understand. It's because, revolutionary. Right, because most people, when you talk about generations, all they think about really is succession, which is one person retiring, an uh, older person dying, and a younger person stepping in to replace the person. Right. But generations really is about the younger generations being trained, but they're coming in not to replace anybody, but they are coming to become reinforcements for the generations that go before them. Mm -hmm. And so what ends up and what is happening in our church is that we end up having many, many, many layers of leaders serving together, mm -hmm. you know, different age groups. So by God's grace in our church right now, we have about six generations of young leaders. And the first generation is about 30 years, in their 30s now, and they are our homegrown pastors and leaders, yeah. right down to the sixth generation where they are 14 to 15 year old leaders. And so, you know, the 14 and 15-year-olds, they have not replaced the 30-year-olds, but they have just come to become the reinforcements of the older generation. And so you find that in Heart of God Church, we have developed a culture of training, equipping, releasing, 
uh, young people to not just like minor roles in the church, but releasing them to significant responsibilities in the church. You know, so that's where the church becomes stronger. Everybody has generations and reinforcements idea written in their hearts. So if you come mm -hmm. and visit Heart of God Church today, you will find that all the services are run by young people, planned by young people. Young people are handling all the expensive equipment. Young people are leading other younger people. And so when you look at that, you will know that we not only live according to the fact of generations, generations and uh, reinforce, being reinforcements, but we also live according to a leadership principle which Pastor Howe have always believed in, and that is young people are leaders today, not just tomorrow. I love that, yeah. and, and my youngest son, Arden, came with us last time we were here, or last time we were here together, and he said he saw that. Yes. He said, Mom, I saw it in the back. He said a lot of times you go to other churches and you've got people and they're kind of goofing off, or he said everybody was fully engaged. He said young men, young women, yes. they were taking care of things that I'm only used to seeing a lot older people doing. And so really what we're talking about is yes. freeing up everybody right. to have value and contribution right. and strength and opportunity. Right. To, to I, This whole church, I love how um, it isn't just a theory. Yeah but it's practicum. It's what you guys are doing. So yes. is a lot of these practical things going to be in the book? Well, there's going to be a lot of principles and practically we're talking about how we have built the church to such an extent that after 20 years, the average age of our church is still 22 years old. So that sounds like a very nice phrase and sentence, but it's a lot of hard work. Yeah. And in the book, there'll be principles on uh, how we have managed to do that and our great focus on young people over and over, a relentless focus on building young people over and over again. 90%, almost nearly 90% of our people, our members are serving in ministry and that's quite a high percentage. Right. And so in that book, we'll be addressing things like that. It's really gonna be really, really interesting. You know. John had come here first, and when he visited Heart of God, he came back and he said, Lisa, if you ever are in Singapore, you must, you must go to Heart of God Church. He said there is something so special on them, and I, I tried to get him to tell me. He's like, well, they're young, and they're, they're fun, but Heart of God is more than young, and it's more than fun. There is a fierce passion for the lost, there is the holy fear of God. And I just remember mm. first coming here and feeling at, as a minister, such a freedom to speak truth. And it was fun, but it was strong. And every single time I've come, I've gotten to see the church grow. It grows in wisdom. It grows in stature. It obviously doesn't grow in age. It's just shrunk down to 22, which is amazing. They won't let us come because we would up your age level. That's what we can't do. it. We'd pull it up to 30. But anyway, we love it. And I wanted to say, I believe that you're coming into the decade that you have been planted for. I believe that you're coming into a season of harvest. I believe that all of the deep work that God has done, the mm. wisdom, mm. the layers, the foundational things, the structural things, mm. the intent, I believe it's all coming together and that this is going to be a decade that goes from strength to strength and harvest to harvest and the things that you've been training for that you're just gonna be astounded by God's faithfulness. So heart of God, yeah. don't get weary. Don't get weary. It's getting ready to hit you like a wave in Jesus' name. And I'm praying, I'm like, God, I, I just never had a mentor. And this is what he said to me. Yeah. He said, everything you wish another woman would have been to you these last eight years, you begin to be. Do you feel like it has also helped us because we yes. built with no reference point? You know what it's yes. supposed to be? Yes. It's just we, we built with a year to heaven yeah. while we're working on earth. So I'm writing a book called Godmothers. Yes. And the subtitle is Why You Need One, How to Be One. Because wow. I do feel like there is a huge breakdown yes. between the older women and the younger women. Right. And we have a whole generation of older women who think yes. that the younger women don't want anything from them don't need anything from them. Right. And then we have a whole generation of younger women that feel completely disconnected yes. from the older women. And we're losing something. And, you know, a lot of times, and again, this would kind of go with your generations. You yeah. know, you'll hear the word generation gap. 
right. which is a difference in opinions, difference in experiences, difference right. in, in approaches uh, and what you're even entertained by. But the word gap became a fascinating word for me. Right. And when I looked up the word gap, it actually means a breach right. in a military position. Wow. And it leaves both sides vulnerable. Right. And so when we don't have mothers and daughters in the church connected, and I'm, I'm not just talking about your natural birth moms, but when right. you don't have God mothers, mothers yes. that actually want to see godliness worked out in the next generation, you leave both generations vulnerable. So um, I am Sicilian, so I thought I'm just going to, push that to the forefront and make it about being a godmother. And, you know, I don't know if this was your case, Leah, but nobody really poured into me. Yeah. And I had cried out and said, God, if you really want me to be a woman in ministry, then you need to send me a mentor. Yeah. And I had been married for eight years. John tricked me into doing a women's meeting. <laughs> right. I, and I, he did. He tricked me. He, he, came, <laughs> no, he came home on a, on a Friday night. He said, I had, we had traveled with our kids. I was pregnant with my third son. You know, we just basically were staying in a very scary motel. And he just said, Lisa, that church is so legalistic. <laughs> they need you. So I told the pastor you would do a women's meeting. Right. And I just said, What? <laughs> I don't even like women. I don't even really think I am one. I'm like a woman's body with a man's brain. I am not doing this women's way. You can't make me do it. And he's like, it's done. You're going to be doing it. I was so mad. And he took the boys out and I'm praying. I'm like, God, I, I just never had a mentor. And this is what he said to me. Yeah. He said, everything you wish another woman would have been to you these last eight years, you begin to be. That's amazing. And I said, I don't know how to do it. I don't know how to do it. And he said, you knew what you were watching for. He said, write it backwards. Yeah. So I sat down and I wrote out. And um, to me, yeah. this is, I'm turning 60. So this is kind of a banner book <gasps> yes. for me where I want to have the strength to be able to pull the bow back yeah. and aim well yeah. with my words and create some pathways. So... Um, just talking about how they connect, how they collide, how they can grow with one another, and from very much a, a godmother to god daughters mindset. Wow. That's good. Yeah. Like, but don't you think that when uh, we didn't have mentors in that sense, even though we might have wanted, do you feel like it has also helped us because we yes. built with no reference point? You know what is yes. supposed to be. Yes, it's just we we built with a year to heaven yeah. while we're working on Earth. <laughs> Has that helped you? I mean, that, you know, yes. At the time, though, I thought it was a lack. Yeah, I thought I don't have what I need. Yes. Um, now I know it was a blessing. That's awesome. Yeah, it kind of feels like godmothers and generations. We yeah. can just see them kind of complement each other. Yeah. yeah, I think we have been people who have gone through a journey. Yep. And you know what? I, I just have to say this. <laughs> Every time she comes up with a book, it's incredible, incredible material. And, uh, you know, I remember recently, a couple of years back, when Lisa released her book, I actually bought nearly 400 copies of her books. And uh, we kind of like gifted the women in our church uh, with that book on Mother's Day. And Thank I tell you. you, they were so grateful. And, and if you are a pastor out there or a leader of influence, I want to really challenge and encourage you to, to have this habit of, of really getting good materials, good resources, powerful materials like Lisa's books and put it into the hands of people because you are going to be so blessed to see how when they read those books, they're going to be so ministered and so empowered like the women in my church. That was one of the best things I've ever done in my life, buying those books for those women, all right? So, so <laughs> yeah, so, so that's incredible. And uh, talk to me about the many, many women that you have influenced in your life. First of all, I want, I want to say I love everything. I love the way that you're leading, and I, I just, I'm in awe of it. So well done, well done. <laughs> and it's, it's, it's beautifully worked out. You know, I have a different uh, influence more than leadership. I don't have so much hands-on. My gift is more I inspire people. Right. I, I want to inspire them. I want to wake them up to who they are. And I believe when people actually really wake up mm -hmm. and realize who they are, then they do what they're created to do. Right. So my focus would be on identity mm -hmm. and on purpose. Right. And I've tried to take women and see themselves with 
the sword of God's word in their hands or see themselves as fierce and nurturing like a lion or yes. see themselves without rival or right. understand that the truth is unshakable and it's not subject to an opinion, but they can build their life on something immovable. And so my incredible privilege is to inspire. Yes. And um, that's been my, my leadership track. But I love that we're sitting here yes. and... Um, we can honor each other's differences That's right. in, the, in the gifting. And, uh, and I want to say thank you that you've actually taken what John has written and what I've written and, and served it like communion to yes. your body. Yeah. And we get to come here yes. when we come to Heart of God. Yeah. We get to see a glimpse of the fruit of people that have good soil yeah. and good seed. And so thank you for letting us come and see that. It's you always know, encouraging. <laughs> we, we may have um, different expressions of ministry and how we serve mm -hmm. God, mm -hmm. but I think essentially our messages are founded on a very key, similar key things mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. character, yeah. being honoring of people, honoring right. of God, character changes, you know, being, building your life on the Word of God. Sometimes we do not really know when Pastor Howe and Pastor Lea ends or when John and Lisa begins, you know. It's such seamless uh, messages because of the same heart and with the same approach to ministry. Well, there's so, something yeah. so powerful when we all are saying the same thing yeah. from a different vantage. Yeah. yeah. So our people get blessed. Mm -hmm. <laughs>